Now, Testimonies Time with Pastor Ulf Lukau. My son is a brigadier. He served in our police force for how long? 39 years. For 39 years. Glory to Jesus. So he's a big man. My God. He's a big man. And not only that, he's now qualified to be an advocate of the High Court in South Africa. An advocate of the High Court. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Of South Africa. I, lo I love saying that. He's a brigadier who served for 39 years. Very high. Now he's qualified as an advocate of the High Court. So he's not. And he's my son. Of course. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Give God glory, somebody. Battles make sense. Defeat? Mm -mm. Battles make sense because it gives victory. It leads to testimony. He had gone through difficulties. Please tell us what did God do for you? I want to give praise and glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. For His way is perfect and His word is flawless. Oh, yes. I, want to pay, I want to say thank you to my father my coach, my minister, the prophet of this generation. Glory to Jesus. The apostle of the end time ministries. In this house, we always win. We are never defeated. In this house, in the house of AMI, under the leadership of our prophet, this house is not of slogans, but is a house of solutions. Oh yes. I don't care what anyone can say about my father, and I will serve in this house because I will see the glory of God that my father preaches about. Our God is not dead. Our God is alive and alive forevermore. I will continue to serve my God under the leadership of my father because where God leads him, I will follow him. Amen. Mm, mm. In 2018, I was very traumatized. I was in deep depression and I was also tormented. And I couldn't sleep for 40 days and 40 nights. And the church, where Bishop Jackie uh, prayed for us. And immediately after she prayed, within 10 minutes, I fell out to sleep. Here it is. It was an acute depression. Yes. It went for how long? It went for about uh, three months. For three months. Great depression. And I was depression is an oppression of the enemy. Yes. The enemy is attacking you, putting pressure on you from outside. And for how long could you not sleep? For about 40 days and 40 nights. For 40 days and 40 nights. Did you take medication to sleep during that time? Uh, no, I was then thereafter admitted to hospital under uh, Dr. Lebo. Dr. Lebo, please come. You know when my son went through that episode? Yes, Dad, I remember. He was admitted? Well, I admitted him to hospital, yes, Dad. All right, we go back to you. For 40 days and 40 nights, you want to sleep, but you could not sleep. A call has been made. Bishop Jackie, outstanding hey. daughter of Outlook House. This is important, and I want you to take notes. If you are out there, you, you, you think these things, is it real? I want you to take note of this. Bishop Jackie went to your house. Yes, Father. Answering the call of the distress that your family has been going through, meaning you, yourself, yes, and Father. prayed for you. Yes, Father. What happened thereafter? Ten minutes after she prayed, we had Holy Communion before that, and she anointed the place, and she prayed, and ten, ten minutes after she left, I fell up into a deep sleep. Somebody, 
Give Jesus Christ glory. Glory to Jesus. I can hear you. Glory to Jesus. I can hear you. Somebody celebrate Jesus. with no sleep the woman of God comes and leads you to Holy Communion this is a mine oh yeah breaking bread as it is done here lay hands on you praise for you after 10 minutes you don't believe that God works miracle are you hearing Jesus are you becoming wiser Oh yeah, please. You are cold. You, you, you do not know. Ten minutes after, he fell asleep. You say, a deep, deep sleep. A deep sleep, my wife had to wake me up to go and sleep in the bed. Give Somebody, you've got to give God glory. Yeah. You've got to celebrate the God of Elf Luca. It's not finished. You will keep on having it. You will keep on receiving. I receive may you receive your miracle. I receive it. I said, may you receive your miracle. I receive it. What happened? I went to back. I went back to work, and I worked. And then during the COVID in 2020, March, I had a deep depression again. I was in hospital again under uh, Dr. Lebo. And uh, the church prayed for me. Bishop Jackie was leading me with Minister Ben and uh, all the pastors and the ministers of the church under your leadership, my father. Although you were in Europe, you were in contact. And uh, I began to get my healing uh, in August. In Here we're talking about the depression that came. Church locked out. I am in Europe. He's talking about a story. How God has been faithful. Somebody say, my God is faithful. My God is faithful. The Lord came down for you again. Yes. Tell uh, me, COVID happened. Then I was healed, I was gonna go back to work uh, it, towards the end of August. And then on the 11th of August, while sitting at home, I told my wife, I cannot breathe. All of a sudden, I couldn't breathe. And I don't know what happened thereafter. I only woke up in hospital after a coma for two weeks in hospital. When did that happen? On the 11th of August, 2020. 2020, 11th of August. You went home and you could not breathe anymore. You spoke to your wife and say, I cannot breathe. Yes. My daughter, your husband told you he could not breathe. And he said that uh, from there on, he did not know what happened. He just, boom. He just know he told you he could not breathe. So we go back to you. You have a medical background, is that correct? Yes, Pastor. You've been high in the medical field. Yes, I was a deputy nursing supervisor. Okay, so you understand when somebody comes to tell you, I cannot breathe. Yes. Tell us what happened when he said that. The moment he said that, I asked my son to put him in the car and get him to a hospital as quick as possible because I could see that he was going to collapse at any time. When I got to the hospital, and because of all the COVID restrictions, I took him to the emergency unit. I barely placed him on the examination couch, and he had a major cardiac arrest. He literally, in layman's terms, died on me. Are you listening? When he said I could not breathe, you told your son to take him to the hospital. Yes. And you took your husband to emergency. Yes. When you put him in a couch, you say he had a major yes. heart attack. Yes. All right. And you say in a layman, uh, because there are many, <laughs> in a layman term, he died. Yeah. And thereafter, they resuscitated him for about four hours, brought him back again to life, and I was in the waiting room praying. As much as I'm a scientific person, I remember the words of my father. God is not moved by your tears, but by your faith and belief. Jesus! Hey. Hey. Somebody, where are you? Hey. 
Is there anybody who's ready to praise Somebody. God? Where are you? Hey. Where are the worshippers? Hey. Glory to Jesus. My God. You were in the waiting room. Mm. You are praying. Carry on. You remembered the words of your father. And I was continuously praying and interceding and asking God not to embarrass me in front of my unbelieving family and my unbelieving friends and the people of little faith around me. You said, don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass me. Lord, Jesus. no on to us, but out to your name. Mm. Give glory. Mm. For why would the nation say, Jesus. where is the Lord, the God? Carry on. And this attack came straight after our seven days of fasting in July. And we had sold our PMO 7. And I remember in the day of distress, we can call on our seeds, tithes and offerings. I began to call on all those seeds, tithes and offerings mm. so that the God of remembrance will remember me hey. in this critical period. Jesus. And he remembered me. Hey. Glory to the God of all. This happened in August just a month after the PMO7. Yes. You had given your PMO7. Yes, I had given it well. Somebody would have used it as a deposit for a house. Did you hear that? Hey. Glory to your Jesus. Your giving is your key. Sometimes mm. you give now, you do not know. What, what you are giving now will stand for in your battle tomorrow. I believe it. She said she gave a PMO 7. Somebody could have given it as a deposit for a house. Now you needed it. Yes. Now you began to claim mm. your yes. giving. Yes. Lord, remember me. And as soon as I prayed, the doctor came out from that room once my husband was stabilized, and he asked me to please call the pastors and ministers, and he does not believe my husband will make it, and they must come and do the last right prayers for him. So the doctor Devil just saw the life. situation. Yes. After making him stable, you believe yes. that he had died. Yes. But they brought him back. They brought Stabilize him, back. him, but he knew that this is not permanent. It's not going anywhere, but I told the doctor, that's and not my The question. reason why he said called the pastors was see. not for restoration. It was to say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm. And bye-bye ministry does not exist in my vocabulary. Hey! hey. Somebody get I your body you. Celebrate Jesus! Hey. No bye-bye ministry! Oh Jesus Christ! Hey. Woman of faith, carry on. And after they had resuscitated him and what the doctor said, I said, doctor, I respect science. I'm a very technical, technological person. But if you knew the God whom I serve, if you knew the God whom I serve, Jehovah Rapha, I know he is right there. And he's not going to allow this situation to move further. Because I know who I am, and I know whose I am. So I refused that immediately, and I called no one. And I told him, you can go in there, finish what you started, but no pastor is coming here. Hallelujah! Deep stuff. And after he was stabilized and taken to the ICU, I left that emergency, I went straight to the bank to take out a healthy seed offering to place it in my altar at Kramadol. Are you hearing this? Mm. Faith. I say, this is a woman of faith. Not only that, she's claiming in a time of distress, remembering mm. and reminding heaven of a giving. She refused the Babai ministry. Yeah. Doctors have said, we managed to bring him alive. And he's a bit stable, but it won't last. 
call the church to say bye bye. You say bye bye ministry, hallelujah, ministries does not exist. I know who I am, I know whose I am. My God is a miracle working God, hallelujah. he's a story changing God. He will do something here. And after all this, hear this. This you must know because this is what I teach you, and this is how it works. Mm. She says she left the hospital straight to the bank. And I transferred a healthy amount to the altar at Cramerville. Transfer a healthy amount. Mm. Your offering is not your contribution. Mm -mm. By the way, for contribution, we are sorted. We don't need your contribution. Mm. We are good. Oh, yeah. You can be here. We, you can sit. You can enjoy. We, we fine. Your worship. Yes. Your seed. Yes. This is your weapon. That's right. If in 2023 you have no seed on the ground, I pity you. She went to the account. Some of you, as she's speaking, you must start doing it now. As you are listening, because that wisdom. Mm. She transferred, she called it a healthy seed amount to the altar. Because her husband is now in ICU. Carry on. And thereafter, I phoned Bishop Jackie and my husband's AMI 12 leader, uh, Pastor Ben. And our intercessory leaders... Pastor Frida and Pastor Ravalani. And I just asked them to intercede for my husband. I did not tell them about this last rites. My husband was transferred to the ICU and while they were transferring all the machinery and equipment in ICU, at about quarter to seven, I decided to call and just find out if he's stable and if everything is settled. I never informed any family because I was connected to this altar. Yes. And I refuse to connect to an altar that's not aligned with the word of God. Hey. Jesus. Ah. Mm, 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 mm. And during that time, when I called the ICU, my husband was being resuscitated again. For the second time. For the second time. It's like a death really was demanding your husband. Mm. This is what I call spiritual warfare. Yes. Yes. Hear me, there are battles. Yes. In our covenant, there is no defeat. But there are battles. Yes. Death is claiming. I can tell you now, if they were not here, if they're not connected, yes, it could have been another story. I promise you. All together. Hmm. Promise you. You call them and what? And thereafter, they told me he's being resuscitated. They don't know how long it's going to last because he's slipping fast. I said, God, my seed is on your altar in Kramavu. I want the book of remembrance to be opened on me tonight. Hey. Send Jehovah Rapha now to turn that situation around for my husband and for us. This is not something I am ready to handle, but you handle it for me. Yes. As I'm busy praying all these prayers, I get a lab report coming to tell me my two children have already got COVID and they're positive. The whole house is sealed now, except me. That everyone in that house is COVID positive. But the worst strain was with my husband and that is why he was critically in hospital. And I remain she, steadfast. This is what my mother says, a golden story. Yes. You're seated, you're listening to it. But this is a time of great calamity. Mm. A husband. Losing almost his life, going back home. Instead of getting better, everybody is now positive. You have nothing else but the God of your covenant. Yes. The teaching of your apostle. Yes. The church is closed. My God. Mm. Oh, Jesus. If you do not have this God, you're in trouble. Yeah. His situation at that moment is still worse. 
and you're trusting God. Carry on in the testimony. And the doctor is not talking to me, only the nurses. Uh, four, four days later, he, I, I had to phone the hospital board and he contacted me. And when I spoke to him, he says, you know, he came in very late. We're not expecting anything. I said, you're talking to his wife. Just for control. You're talking to his wife. I hear what you are saying, but that is not my portion. If you knew the God whom I serve and whose daughter I am, that is not my portion. And I stood on that word, he says, I said, I know you have to tell me, but I am telling you, my God has told me otherwise. You get inside that room and you do what you're supposed to do because I am going to my God and I know what he is doing. And when he gave me the total rundown, what science says, science has limitations, but we serve a God of no limitations. Hallelujah. Because even in my right mind, when I looked at that report and I heard that report coming from the specialist, he was telling the truth, but God said otherwise. The report Jesus. was bad. Mm-hmm. What did the report say? The report, what was his condition at that moment? The condition, apart from being critical, all his organs were failing. They Apart were from being critical, all his organs yes. were failing. Starting from the heart, the lungs took a severe beating, the liver was already in a situation, the thyroid was enlarged, the kidneys were not working properly, the heart took and the lungs took such a severe beating that they had to call the professor to come and do an assessment in the middle of the night to see what can we do to relieve the pressure on the heart. Are you understanding this? And get this the... was a critical situation, a very bad situation. Mm. Everything was failing. Really to say it is over. Yes. Then what happened? And during that time, he remained ventilated for two weeks. Ventilated? Ventilated, full ventilation. Full ventilation? Happened. Yes, totally paralyzed. He didn't even know what was happening at all. And I was just trusting God and standing on the word and not talking to no family. My daughter. Can we applaud for her? Just just applaud for her. Give God glory. You, You have to be a woman of faith. Mm to endure this. He said, he remembers only when he said he could not breathe. After that, he does not. You remain there for two weeks. He was ventilated for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Right there. Your husband almost died twice. Yes. Most of his major main organs were failing him. Yes. You trust a God, you give to God. Mm. What are those? These are the reports. Now, this is the cardiologist that did that. Do, do you want to see it? <laughs> they are curious. Any other report? Mm. So he was close to have another report called death certificate. And during that time of the second cardiac arrest, He sustained a stroke on the left side of his face. He has sustained a stroke. On the left side of the face and the hand, mobility was gone. After all that, what happened in the hospital? He came out of the hospital on a walker. This is him. They say we're all hey. They did not know his AMI. They lied. Look at him now. Walking by himself. Coming out. Bishop said victory is sweet. 
ward with all these patients that were so sick. There were 15 of them. Only two survived. The rest died. One of the two was my husband. Hey! I pray the blessings of God. My son told me is going back to work as an advocate in the high court. Hey, glory to Jesus. God is an amazing God. My daughter, you are an outstanding woman of faith. Yes. Oh, yes. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord keep you. Yes. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you were blessed by this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can catch Pastor Avlok Howe on AMI TV on the public bouquet or on our live stream on AMITV.com. You can follow Pastor Avlok Howe on all social media platforms at Avlok Howe.